This is Maria Sperber with Steel Sea Brass and as I promised I'm going to start to do some videos trying to help with uh, chronic pain uh, due mostly to hypermobile uh, joints and some people that have hypermobile joints have uh, EDS and some people have just hypermobile joints and then still have excruciating pain that comes with that. So I'm going to start showing you uh, trying to explain why I have this theory that we have to start in the lower back. Most of people that start with hypermobility start to feel an SI joint. And the SI joint is here, like in the dimples of the bump, right here. So if you feel pain here, then you have a problem normally with the um, SI joint. So the SI joint, for many years, it was thought to be not mobile to begin with. And then it became, became from doctors and scientists thinking that it wasn't a mobile joint to finding out that it was a chronic uh, due to people driving too much, sitting too much, not necessarily people having mobile joints, which makes it a lot worse. Having this joint moving more than this millimeter to this should move. So when that happens, our body doesn't ask our permission. It starts to tie up that area. And it does it so it gets protected and we don't move it. It's like putting a cast on something. So we, we don't move it. And if it was about to heal itself, that would be great. If it wasn't going to affect the rest of the body, that would be great too. But none of those things happen. So let's say again that that's the problem. And most of people with chronic pain, even if it's in their neck or it's in their arms or it's in their, in their pecs, start in the SI joint. So if this gets in pain, every time that I move, I'm going to try to avoid the natural arch of my back. And I'm going to start to do this and move a little bit to the front. This is completely subconscious, so I'm not doing it on purpose. And I'm gonna start to move a little forward. So when I move a little forward, instead of having the weight in this area, which is a natural weight, but gravity will pull me down and everything will fall into place, it will start to move my point of gravity to the front of my body, this way. And so, can you show my, my feet, please? Thank you. So, when this happens, and I start to stand up like this, and a lot of people, when they go in the, in the mirror, instead of being this way, they're putting their, their um, way this way. Look what happens with my knees. Now, my knees are receiving tons of extra weight because he doesn't have the hips to compensate or receive some of the weight of the upper body. Everything goes in my knees. And when my knees start to go, then my ankles are going to start to feel that weight. Now, this is a, in the general population this happens. Now, but what happens if you have hypermobile EDS, then the knees have more weight support and they're not, they're not going to be able to easily because they're hypermobile. So what the body is going to create is like a cast here and here. And it's going to go all the way in the back and all the way in the front, trying to almost immobilize that area, but not actually immobilize it, but making the joints less flexible, making the joints support it. The, the joints are not s supposed to need all that work for the muscles and the fascia. But in our case, that's what happens. So the muscles and the fascia start to tie up, tie up, tie up, to support. So we have people leaning this way. So when the person is leaning this way for too long, we're going to start to see that the feet start to get a little deformed. And that is called, what is it called? When the, when the toe starts to go, hammer toe. The hammer toe happens when 
people start to put their leaning like this, they think that they're in a fantastic uh, posture. This is the, the right posture. They don't even notice they're this way. And so now what's supporting all my, my weight is mostly my toes and mostly the big toes. So eventually they start to deform because they're receiving too much weight. And so people with, with EDS or hypermobility in general will start to feel this horrible pain in their feet added to all the, the path the already the pain has passed, which is the SI joint is going to be going through the quads here, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet, that's what's just happening in the, in the bottom part of my body. So in the top part of my body, my body's not supposed to be doing this neither. I can't be like this like for so long because if I'm like this for so long, I'm going to fall on my face. So what my body does is start to arch to try to compensate that weight up. And then we end up standing like this instead of like this. We're doing this. See, it still is not a horrible posture. It's not so obvious. It's just, oh, that person has a horrible posture. No, 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 no. It doesn't look so bad. It's not like I'm walking like this, but I'm not walking like this, neither. Because this arch is causing pain in my SI joint, and, and my body's avoiding that. Because when there is pain in the SI joint, it's so immobilizing that you have, your body tries to do anything to compensate, try to eliminate it. So then now, we see what happens in the bottom of my body. Now, the top of my body, I'm doing this, so my shoulders are getting closer, and my neck now is in a position where it's supported by the muscles and the fascia, but not center like gravity wants me to be, so it's pulling me down. Now it's pulling me down in a bad position. So it's pulling my head this way, down this way, gravity, and what's supporting my head this way is this muscles here, this muscles here, and the muscles here of the upper back, and the, um, the fascia in those areas. And that includes the pecs too. So I'm doing this. And if I am hypermobile, guess what? It's getting even tighter because I was already hypermobile without any help. So now my head is out of place. So my mobility, which is more than normal, is going to need more support, which means I'm going to tighten up even more. So how, how do we fix all this disaster? Um, there is many approach to that. And in my experience, my personal approach, which I already explained in the written part of this video, that it doesn't, it cannot be applied to everybody in the same fashion because everybody's different, everybody has different comorbid uh, uh, issues, uh, everybody has different situations of um, pretty active, some people are bedridden and they can't uh, do everything at the same rhythm or uh, let's say when we start to use resistant bands, they might not be able to use resistant bands yet, and that's all okay. As so long as we're moving forward, uh, we're doing we're doing well. So what I'd like to show you now is the first muscle that we should strengthen. So my muscles here are going to support this joint properly. Instead of hyper-contracting, or chronically contracting, if we develop strength, then the muscle will be strong enough to support the joint without having to do an emergency job that is just contracting a spasm. That's what causes most of the pain, is a constant spasm. And when it comes to the spasm, the myofascia, which is the fascia that covers the muscle, goes in chronic contraction, and then the rest of the fascia that connects it with all the rest of, of, let's say, the leg or the back, all this soft tissue that connects everything with everything, gets an spasm too, so then we have a huge pain and problems of, of mobility. 
the ideal would be to be able to release and create a strength and strengthening from there but it's not possible because that will mean that we couldn't move we will release and then create a strengthening and that's is that it was so we have to function so what we have to do is little bits of strengthening and little bits of release each time little bits of it being the most important part the strengthening we all want to have release of pain I have done it myself in, t in times of desperation release my whole body felt in heaven for two hours just to feel horrific pain later on because all my body went into spasm again because the main problem wasn't fixed yet so creating strengthening is a process it doesn't happen in a day or two, in a week or two and three. It happens in time, but it's worth every second of invested in it because it will create relief and pain and sometimes it will eliminate the, the pain. So if you're taking the aloe and you're taking your probiotics and you feel that your joints are getting stronger, they are not so hypermobile, you might be experiencing even more pain now because your muscles and your fascia are chronically contracted and you might be like I, I, I read some comments uh, tempted to leave the protocol no no don't do that don't do that because now is the time where you're gonna actually feel it even more than other people that still have problems with with hypermobility or big problems with hypermobility because now you strengthen you release and you're done if of course you have to continue with the protocol to, to maintain your health but in the case of people that still have problems for hypermobility the process is going to be a little uh, more a little slower but as effective if if you're consistent consistent with that so the first muscle that we need to uh, strengthen and the muscle that is really strong in most people including athletes like people that I know I need dozens of people in world and dozens of people that do yoga as a career and their gluteus medius is a disaster has no strength whatsoever because they push push they never pull and so their bodies are in balance so the gluteus medius is in this area and I'll, and I'll show um, a graphic at, at one point but what more important is to learn how to feel the gluteus medius when you feel where the gluteus medius is then you will know if the exercise you're doing is right or not if you are actually targeting that muscle if that muscle is extremely weak you won't feel it firing and it will take a little longer for you to feel firing. Firing is like when you feel that the muscle is actually working. So for people that are a uh, bit ridden maybe and they're like very weak, just be patient and compassionate with yourself. Just do what you can. And the next day you add a few seconds more. And the next day you add a few seconds more until you start to feel and fire up. There is a way to do it with a machine called TENS that is not expensive and I'll show it in another video if if you try and try and you still feel that it's not it's not firing then there's other way to do it. but let's use the natural ways first so I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna show you um, how to find this muscle okay now I'm sitting I'm sitting here and I'm gonna show you how to feel the gluteus medius this is the one that we're going to start strengthening. So we're going to sit with our feet parallel like this and if you're a bit ridden or you have the tendency to dislocate your wrists or your fingers then you can have the assistance of of someone. But this is actually moving. It doesn't have to be anything extreme. You don't have to push very hard. You just have to realize where is the effort coming from. That's it. So I'm going to push my legs this way inside and with my knees I'm gonna try to resist right so I'm gonna do this 
If I don't feel it doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross my, my arms like this. And I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to feel here in the back, coming from here in the back, from this area up here, I'm going to feel the effort coming. Another way to do it is exactly the same from the inside. I'm going to put my hands here in the inside of my knees, on the inside and the side, in the medial side. And I'm going to start to push inwards with my knees and outwards with my arms. And I'm going to try to feel where is the effort coming from. The more the muscle is, the weaker the muscle, the more difficult to find it. So I might need two or three tries to find where is the muscle coming, the, the strength or effort, I mean, is coming or not coming, right? I, I might feel just the sensation in this area here. But it's very important that you identify the area. Where is the area? So when we do the exercises, you keep on checking in that area. If that area is firing up, which firing up, we already said, it is when we start to feel that the muscle is actually working.